Saints, Prophet and Don O'Brien, Servant of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner here. I have a word today. I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but the Holy Spirit got me a word this morning and I want to share with you. It's called, it's deliverance time. I'm telling you, God is about to move. We're going to worship this morning and then I'm going to bring you a word. So let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here to say what you're wanting me to say. I yield myself to you, Lord, and I ask you to speak through me slowly and clearly, Lord. We welcome you, your precious Holy Spirit. You're welcome. Father, I believe you're about to move, Father. Deliverance time is almost here, Lord. You're about to move in the hearts of your people, Lord. We're about to see a revival, I believe. I believe it's coming forth, Jesus. You're about to do great miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, let's worship this morning. You know, we're getting ready to go to war in the spirit. All right, for the Lord is marching on. These are old songs that I'm playing. I love to worship the Lord, saints. There's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Let's praise him. Amen. We're going to war. Marching on, and his army is at the throne, and his glory shall be seen upon our land. Amen. Raise the anthem, sing the great song. Praise the Lord, for oh, God is no weapon formed against thou shalt stand. Amen. We clap them the host is Jesus.
You know, I thought of this one today. We're going to play it. You remember this one by Petra? The battle belongs to the Lord. Oh, and Petra was my husband's favorite. He used to love this group. This is an older one. belongs to the Lord. The weapon has fashioned against the shell's hand. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory and honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory and honor, power and strength to the Lord. by Amy Grant. Save the son of Abraham through the power. 
power of your hand turn the sea into dry land to the outcast on her knees you were the god who really sees and by your might you set your children free El Shaddai El Shaddai El Yonah Age to age, you're still the same By the power of the name El Shaddai, El Shaddai Echonama Adonai We will praise and lift you high El Shaddai People couldn't see what Messiah ought to be. Though your word contained the plan, they just could not understand. Your most awesome work was done through the frailty of your son. El Shaddai, El Shaddai. You're still the same by the power of the name. You shall die, you shall die. by Kim Walker.
Shouts of that. 
on its way. My soul, my Savior, God, to me. Praise Him, praise Him. How great Thou art. Jesus, you're great. How great Thou art. Yes. I exalt thee. Praise him, saints. There's no one like Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you. We give you honor. We give you glory. Hallelujah, Lord. We welcome you here. Fill this place with your presence. Touch your people, Lord. We're so hungry for more of you. We want more of your presence, Lord. We wait upon you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. Thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. But thou, O Exalted far above all God. Praise him, saints. Mm -hmm. I, I exalt. exalt.
God, oh, I love to be in the Lord's presence. The Holy Spirit is here. There's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. 
All right, let me share a word with you before I give you the word. The release of fear. This is coming from our daily bread. Take courage, it says. It is I. Don't be afraid. Mark 650. Our bodies react to our feelings of dread and fear. A weight in the pit of our stomachs along with our hearts pounding as we gulp for breath signal our sense of anxiety. Our physical nature keeps us from ignoring these feelings of unease. The disciples felt shockwaves of fear one night after Jesus had performed the miracle of feeding more than 5,000 people. The Lord had sent them ahead to Bethsaida. I'm not good at pronouncing words, but that can be pronounced differently. I'm not good. All right. So he could be alone to pray. During the night, they were rowing against the wind when suddenly they saw him walking on the water. Thinking he was a ghost, they were terrified. Mark 6, 49 through 50. But Jesus reassured them, telling them not to be afraid and to take courage. As he entered their vessel, the wind died down and they made it to the shore. I imagine that their feelings of dread calmed as they embraced the peace he bestowed. When we're feeling breathless with anxiety, we can rest assured in Jesus' power. Whether it calms our waves or strengthens us to face them, He will give us the gift of His peace that transcends all understanding. Philippians 4, 7. And as He releases us from our fears, our spirits and our bodies can return to a state of rest. Now here's a little prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, help me when the dread seems to cling to me. Release me from my fears and give me your peace. The Lord releases us from fear. Here's a little insight. When we read today's story, we may wonder why these dirty fishermen would be afraid of a ghost. Mark 6, 49. But put yourself in their shoes. The disciples did see someone walking on the water, and they knew that was not possible. You know, it kind of, I'm just going to stop there. It kind of makes us think, you know, I know a lot of believers today don't believe that God is going to do great miracles. You know, Jesus said, if you but believe, you will see you will do greater things than what he did. So I believe you have to have faith because we're going to see that in our time period. It's coming. Okay, so back then they, they, they didn't believe that, it says here. Sepals did not see someone. They did see someone walking on the water and they knew that was not possible. We may not fear the same things they fear, but we all have fears. Just like the disciples, we need the assurance of Jesus' words. Take courage. It is the I don't be afraid. The Lord who fed the multitude with a few loaves and fishes is the same one who walked on water. Disciples did not need to fear because they knew who Jesus was and what he could do. Jesus was essentially saying, don't be afraid, you know me. What are you afraid of today? What do you need to remember about what Jesus can help? What do you need to remember about Jesus that can help you trust him? Alright, that was just a little word that I wanted to share with you from um, our daily bread. All right, I want to bring you this word. Um, I wrote a new poem today about deliverance time. And that's the word that I called it. It is deliverance time. And I got this at 7.34 a.m. Are you ready to advance? Deliverance time is here and now. I, the Lord, am calling you forth for such a time as this. Get ready with your feet shod with the gospel of peace. Now, I've got this word this scripture this morning and we need to be putting on the full armor of God I told you we're going to war in the spirit where we don't fight against flesh and blood against principalities powers and rulers of darkness we may go to war um, which I believe we're going to see a war sometime here all right we need to keep Israel in prayer as well you know because I think they're getting ready to go to war you know um, I know a lot of you see me wearing my little um what what's that thing called I forget the name of it um I forget it, what it's called now, but, you know, I'm a Russian Jew on my mother's side. You know, not that that matters, but, but yarmulke. My dad got this when he was in um, Israel, so I like to wear it. But, yes, on my mother's side, they were from Russia, so and they were Jewish. So I'm a, I have Russian Jew in me, and then on my dad's side, I, I have Italian in me. I'm bold. That's where I get that fiery Italian side of me. All right, so let me read you the scripture, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. The whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. For asserting, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all the stands. We need to be putting on that full armor on. When we go out the door, saying, that's for all of us. I really feel we need to put that armor on before we head out that door. Here's the prayer. 14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Verse 19, and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in chains. That it, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. <clears throat> the spirit of Elijah is about to break out, I heard the Lord say. Get ready to speak to your neighbor, friend, co-worker, relative, in season and out. The time is now. Share the gospel with whomever you come in contact with. I'm returning soon, but remember my timing is not yours, all right? God's timing is not ours, okay? But he is returning soon. But remember, his soon is not the same. One day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day. I will return to get you at a time you do not even know. Child of God, you must be ready, he said. Matthew 24, 6, 8. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. See, there's that word again. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, there we go, pestilences, which we're already seeing with, you know, all those people that died with that flu virus, and earthquakes, which we're seeing in various places, all these are the beginning of sorrows. The end will come when God is ready, alright, remember we read this the other day. Matthew 24, 36 through 44, no one knows a day or hour. But of that day and the hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man, verse 37. Verse 38, for as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Verse 39, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. <clears throat> Excuse me. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 4, Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the meal, one will be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Verse 43, But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Verse 44, therefore you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. God soon is not our soon. We must be watching and waiting. The Lord will return at an hour we do not expect. Luke 21, 34 to 36, the importance of watching. I'm giving this several times. But take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. <clears throat> Excuse me, verse 35. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Hard days are coming. Take heed to God's word. Prophetess Donna Bryan has warned you of what is getting ready to take place. You will be wise to listen and learn. Do not ignore God's warnings. You know, that's what, I, what a prophetic servant is to do. We're to keep on warning. And yes, I may reiterate and say the same things over and over again. That's because God loves us. He loves you and I enough to warn us. And I know people are saying, well, where is this coming? Remember, God takes his time. He wants none of us to perish, all right? Because I know there are those saying, well, they've been saying that for years. Well, 
Imagine if God would have already came and maybe you just came to the Lord. You know, what if he had already come and then you wouldn't have been saved? You know, God has a timing. He knows who's going to come into the kingdom and who's not. Who's going to ignore it? I mean, there's people, yes. I mean, that I'm going to bring this word and that they'll never receive Christ, all right? But God's got you there, me there, sharing the gospel and getting it out there, warning people, telling our families, our loved ones, brother, um, people that we may know, our co-workers, or people may, may run into. That's why I said get the, the gospel out there, share the gospel. It doesn't matter who you are. We're all called to share the gospel, all right? 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11, the day of the Lord, all right? Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we don't need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. See, we're not going to know it. It's just going to happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat. Let me grab a quick drink. Well, verse 3, while people are saying... Peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman. And they will not escape. Verse 4, but you brothers and sisters are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. So you should know what's going on. If you are a Christian, you know the times that we're living in. If you're reading the word and you're keeping an eye on everything. Now I'm not saying get consumed with everything. No. Yes, I share news with you because it's important that we know what's going on. We need to know the times that we're living. These are perilous times, and we're seeing the days are changing. So we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. Things are getting ready to turn. Um, we're getting ready to see something take place. Now, I'm not saying we're going home yet, okay? I don't believe it's time yet. I know God has been preparing Daniel and I for such a time as this. I really, truly believe that. Not just us, but there are those that God is preparing. He's getting ready to use because there's going to be a great revival, I believe, before the return of Christ. There's going to be a great pulling away. We've talked about that before. I'm going to read some scripture to you about that. I've read it before. There's going to be a great pulling away. We're going to see before the Son of Man of perdition is revealed. It says that in the Bible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 5. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Verse 6, And let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, verse 8, Let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as um Verse 9, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, he died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Verse 11, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just in fact that you are doing. Keep your heads up in all situations like a good soldier in the army. Remember I told you, we're going to have to be strong in the day's head. There's not going to be those patting you back saying, oh, it's going to be okay. No, you're going to have to hold your shoulders up back and be strong soldier in God's army. Second Timothy Two, three to four says, <clears throat> excuse me, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse four, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him and enlist in him as a soldier. Encourage your brother and sister in the Lord as you see the day approaching. See, you know, when you see your brother or sister down, encourage them. You know, just like I told you, I can't always be strong on you know, I feel like, God, I need to be strong because I know for you, all right? And I, I need God to help me. And that's why I tell my dad all the time. I say, Dad, sometimes I say, Dad, you have to pray today. I can't pray, you know, because, you know, I'm having a bad day. I, I'm just like you. You know, I'm no different. We're, we're, you know, I'm changing from glory to glory like you are. But we need to keep one another encouraged. That's why if you ever notice, one may be up one day and then the other one is there to encourage. I want to lift the other one up. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promises faithful. Verse 24, and let, us, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Verse 25, Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now I've told you before and I'm going to tell you again. Make sure you're reading God's word, okay? 
You have to keep yourself encouraged in the Lord. Because remember, it talks about in um, Hosea, my people die for lack of knowledge. All right. So it's important that you're reading God's word because, you know, I'm as I get busier, I'm not going to be able to read your every scripture. You may have to jot down. You may have to go research and do some studying yourself. You know, I can't do everything. You're going to have to be strong and do it for yourselves because as the days go on, we're not going to have others patting us on the back because they're going to be so worried about themselves. You know, so you're going to have to be strong. This is what I heard God say, and I know I've said it several times, and I know people think I'm crazy, but this is what God gave me. Are you ready for a major collapse in the government? Now, we've said this before. I've told you a collapse is coming. Remember last year, right before the end of the year, I said hard times are coming. And remember, if you remember, we're going to just stop. Remember when it was a new year and everybody had a blessing message, and I said, God, I don't have a message. And what does he say to me? He says, my winnowing fork is in my hand. And I'm getting ready to, to clear my threshing floor. And I was, wow. And I looked up threshing and it says shake. And then I've told you about the shaken baby syndrome where he's going to go like this to the church and to the world. All right. He's getting ready to shake us up. And he told me, if you remember, let me see. I'm just reiterating what God has shared with me. So that you can go and and listen to some of these videos for yourself. You know, remember, um, I did a video. The storm has had our way, six shelter on 125.18. The shaking has started in the United States. That was on January 23rd when we had that big earthquake in Alaska and in California. All right. The first... My winning fork's in my hand. I'm getting ready to clear my threshing floor. Hard days are ahead of you, my children, in 2018. Tell my people I'm about to wake them up. He, he said that at the end of December. All right? You can go take a listen to these videos. So I know the Holy Spirit is speaking. And he's, remember, in 2015, he said layoffs are coming. And I believe that we've seen the market go up and the, they go down. I believe they're they're playing with the market, too, as well. I believe that. Okay? And remember, I gave a word about, um, the Holy Spirit gave this to me. And it was mighty. In fact, my dad was crying on the red to him. Um, I gave that word about, I'm getting ready to cleanse the United States of America. Because remember, all these things are coming out now that we're hearing in the news. And that the Lord told me we need to stand with our present, whether you voted for him or not. Because we're, we're called to obey authority. Those God has placed in office. You know, we need to refrain for President Donald Trump that he'll make the right decisions because whatever decisions he makes affects you and I, saints. So it's important that we keep the, him in prayer. We keep the Trump administration in prayer. It's so important, saints. All right? So I'm just going over what God has shown me because I told you something is going to happen that's going to affect all of us and that people are going to turn and want to leave President Donald Trump. But, you know, we need to stand and we need to pray for him. All right? Now, I'm not saying that he's going to save America. All right? I'm going to stop and say that again because I know people think, well, they think, well, President Trump is going to save America. No. The only one that can save and help America is God. We need to be looking to God saying, no man is going to save America. It doesn't matter who runs our nation. It doesn't matter. We've got to be looking to the Lord. So he said, are you ready for a major collapse in the government? It's almost here. Get ready. The government will collapse out of nowhere. I believe that. I believe it's going to happen. Boom, out of nowhere. We've already seen certain things happen. I told you before, major disasters. All it takes is a major disaster, a huge major disaster. And there goes the coming. i got to share some with you. You know, the other day I posted something up on um, the White House website. And um, somebody said to me, um, that I, I need not worry about disasters. They said, you need to be worried about political matters. And you know what I said to them? I said, I'm not worried about disasters or political matters. And I said, you know why? I said, because Jesus Christ is in control. And I witnessed him about Jesus. I said, because if you don't have the Lord, then you've got something to worry about. So I, I like that. 
you know. And like I've said, you know, all it takes is a major disaster. You know, we're so concerned about jobs and healthcare, which those are great things. And President Donald Trump is doing a very good job to help our economy. But remember, I've told you, we've got to be wise like serpent, innocent as doves. We've got to be strong in the spirit because there are things that are getting ready to take place, all right? And we need to pray for President Donald Trump because I don't know if he accepted Christ. I believe he did. We need to pray that he be surrounded with spiritual advisors that God has put there, not man. I'm going to tell you right now. It's not about a name and how big your name is because not one of those spiritual advisors are leading him in the right direction. Not one of them has said anything to him. Remember I told you that one pastor when they had that flood in Texas and th that one pastor said if my people will humble themselves and pray. He left out the most important verse. Turn from their wicked ways. You know, how can we expect God to heal America when America has not turned from its wicked ways. We're killing millions of babies daily. We allow same-sex marriage. I mean, whatever goes in our nation, you know. There are things going on under under um, the carpet that we're hiding, even in political, that we don't, don't want to talk about. What about worshiping any religion? You know, even the president said, Whatever God. No, it's not whatever God because there's only one God that's going to help us. It's Jesus. Because if you remember, was it Elijah that prayed to his God and God answered? But the false prophets prayed to their false God, Baal, and it didn't, he didn't answer. So the times that we're going to be living in, the only true God that we can pray to is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All their gods are false gods. They're not going to help us. All right? And I really truly believe that President Donald Trump needs to have advisors there that are praying for him, praying for our nation that we make the right decision. Because, you know, he's bold, you know, and we need to pray for him, you know. So don't go knock him because he may say things, you know, hey, we all say things we shouldn't say. I know I do. I'm bold. I'm not Italian, you know. But I'd be like him. I'd say, you're all fired. They're not doing their job. They should be leading our nation, our president, and what is right. Not one of them are seeking God for what is right in our nation. All right? I'm just going to say that. That is my opinion. I know people may disagree, but that's my opinion. All right. All right. So let's get back to this here. So we're talking about a major collapse that's coming. He said to me, you did not expect this to happen. I, the Lord, have warned you time and time again. My people are stubborn, I hear the Lord say. Remember, I mean, I've been saying this over and over again, and the church does not want to hear it. If you, if you think about it, they're living in this fantasy world. They're lukewarm. They're not even preaching the truth. They're not standing for what is right. And it's important, saints, that we start preaching the true gospel. We start doing what we're supposed to do because it's all about to change. All right? He said, they will not listen. You will look and see what I, the Lord, will do. America the Great has been warned time and time again. Repent now, says the Lord. The kingdom of God is at hand. Get ready, says the Lord. This is your final warning. All right. That was the word. I believe something is coming. And I've said that more than once. And I'm going to keep sharing that word. All right. Let me read you this poem. I wrote this today. It's called Deliverance Tom. All right. It is deliverance time. I'm coming to set the captives free. Say, dear Jesus, I need you to deliver me. That's right. We need Jesus to deliver us. This is the hour. Are you, my children, ready? Remain strong and steady. Hold your head up in all situations. Build your house on the rock, not on sinking sand. We've said that over and over again. If your house, your church, your home your spiritual house, this house, you're built upon the rock Christ Jesus, you're going to stand. You're going to be able to handle what is getting ready to take place. But if you're not built upon the rock Christ Jesus, you're going to crash. You hear what I'm saying? You're not going to be able to stand. It's important, pastors, that you get your church built upon the rock Christ Jesus. All right? When hard times begin to happen, you, my children, will stand. The world is going to get real dark. Children, let your light shine brightly. Do not take the mark. Food will be scarce. People will take the mark of the beast. Money will be worth nothing. In time, it will cease. Children, watch and wait. 
Jesus is never early or late. The Lord will return for us on the exact date. Everything God does is in line with his plan. It does not include man because he moves by his own hand. Jesus said, I'm the truth, life, and way. Call on Jesus Christ today. That's right. Call on him today. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3. I've got two scriptures. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by the word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the fallen way comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now, are you and I going to be here to see the Antichrist? Okay, I don't know. Only God knows. But I told you there's going to be a great fallen way because there are those going to these churches that are not by God. All right, they are by the hired hand and they're all going to flee. We're going to see that. We're going to see that take place. I really, truly believe that. And those th those ones that are going there, they're not built up on the right because they're listening to false doctrine. So we're going to see that happen. Now, Revelation 13, 11 through 18 says, The beast from the earth. Then I saw another beast coming up, up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Verse 12, And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes first come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth with those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Verse 15, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand, on their right hand or their foreheads, and that no one might buy or sell except one who has a mark uh, or name of the beast or the number of the name. So you don't want to have that because if you get that mark, that's it. I'm going to tell you right now. Do not take the mark of the beast. Verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him who has understand calculate the number of the beast. For the number of man is number 666. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know everything about prophecy. I, I know everyone else doesn't know. They have their own opinion. You know, nobody really truly knows exactly what's going to happen. Are we going to be here to see the, the Son of Man perdition? revealed are we going to do great miracles while wow, the son of a man i don't know because if you think about it um there's not going to be any food so we're going to have to see god multiply food raise the dead i mean so are we going to be um in this and then god's going to come and get us i i don't know you know, I'm not a pre. I know there are those that think we're going to get out of here, and that's going to be it. I don't believe that. And then there's those that think we're going to be left here. I don't believe that. Because if you remember, um, um, well, Abraham, God took him out of Sodom and Gomorrah, all right, before it got really bad. Now, I'm not saying you and I are not going to go through things, all right? But what we think may be really hard may not be what God, what his judgment, you know what I'm saying? So um, I believe we're going to go through something. And we look at the disciples and all that they went through. And I believe that God has brought Daniel and I through tough times for a reason. So that we can help strengthen you. Not that I'm there yet. No, none of us are there. We're all changing from glory to glory. But I truly believe God will take care of us in, in the future. We don't need to worry. We don't need to pray. All right. God is going to do greater miracles than we've ever seen before. He said, if you but believe, we're going to multiply food. We're going to raise his dead. We're going to do greater miracles. So I believe no matter what happens, God will take care of us if we are staying near to the Lord. We have to abide in the Lord. Maybe you're listening to me today and you don't know Christ. All right. For those who don't know, first I want to say I was in a bad car accident. I had brain surgery on the right side of my brain. I should have been dead. I'm a walking miracle. I'm here for a reason and so are you. I know there are people that, that can't understand what I'm saying. They think I'm stirring, think I'm 
Drinking, no, I'm not drinking. I was hit by a drunk driver in 2000 that almost killed me. I'm a walking miracle. I'm here for a reason, and so are you. You're here. You know, I remember I was in the hospital. I had dream after dream. I was unconscious about four weeks. The paramedic, she was off duty, and she happened to stop, and she was going in the direction that I was going. Had she not stopped, I would have been dead. I was turning purple. She was driving her own vehicle. God had her stop, and then she... I remember that she took me to the hospital. She found me flat uh, uh, in the car. I was laying across the um, the seat. Okay, my seatbelt, the angel. I don't know. Something kept me in my seat. The angel. I had the, had the seatbelt came off. You know. So God spared me and left me for such a time as this. Not just me, but you're here. You know. Maybe you're here just to hear me preach. Okay. So don't go turning off this YouTube. Hey, don't turn off this station if God is trying to reach you. And maybe he's been using me. And maybe you're an atheist. Maybe you don't believe in Christ. You don't believe anything's going to happen. You know, you are seeing times are changing. We're living in a world where things are changing daily. All right. I know people are so caught up in their own little world. And that's about to stop. I believe God is going to stop everything. You know, because people are so into their own little world and don't see what is happening. Lord, I just pray that you wake your people up, Lord. I pray, Father, take the blinders off your people and even off your Christians, Lord, that they can see what is coming in Jesus' name. But, you know, if you're listening to me, you never truly have given your heart and life to Christ. Now it's time. Maybe you backslidden. Maybe you've gone away from God and you haven't been following God. It's time for you to come back. It's time for you to return to the Lord. Now it's a time, not later, now. I mean, we're seeing things are about to take place. You know, I keep coming on or I keep warning. I know there are other prophetic servants that are warning and letting you know what is coming. That's because God loves you and I. You know, if he didn't love you, he wouldn't say anything at all. You know, I know people think I'm being harsh, I'm being mean. No, this is the calling that God's placed on my heart, you know. It's, you know, I, I feel compelled that I've got to tell you what I, I sense God is saying to me. You know, I'm not saying I'm right about everything. No, I'm just, you know, I, I seek the Lord just like you do. You know, I, I, I want you to pray for me because I want to hear God's voice. But I want to do God's will. It's so important, you know, because we're all going to stand before the Lord on Judgment Day. And He's going to ask you, what did you do? Did you do your own will or did you follow the Lord's will? What did you do with your life? Think about it for a minute. Stop and think, what are you doing with your life? Are you busy going here, there, planning your next vacation, your next trip, planning what you're going to do tomorrow? You know, we're here one minute and we're gone the next. You know, our, our eternity is not promised. No one is promised to turn. I remember I was in the hospital and I remembered I wanted to do my life over again. Yes, I was saved, but, but it felt so real. I was in, I felt like I was in some, I couldn't get out and I wanted to do my life again. You only have one life. You hear me? You can't do your life over again. There's no such thing as reincarnation. You won't come back and be something else. If you don't know Jesus Christ and Nazareth, today is your day. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know you could have a heart attack you can get hit by a car. You could just die suddenly. I mean, things happen to young people. They happen to old people. If you don't know Christ, today is your day. I want to invite you to give your heart and life to Christ. I want you to pray with me and mean it. Don't say it out of fear. Say it because you're ready to give your heart and life to Christ. You're ready to make a stand and follow the Lord. You're tired of doing things on your own. You're seeing that it's not working. And you're a little concerned. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be worried about our future. Jesus holds our future. And he holds my future. He's in control. There's nothing you and I can do to, to try to prevent whatever is going to happen. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen, but we can be ready. We can be, make sure we are ready in the Lord. If you're not ready and you know that if today was your last day and you were going to stand before the Lord and he's going to ask you what, you, what would you do, why don't you want to be ready and that you enter the kingdom of heaven and not hear him say, away from me, I never knew you. You can have that happen today. You can pray with me and you can receive Christ. Bow your head with me and just mean it. Just pray this simple prayer and say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Come into my heart and save me, Jesus. 
I believe you died for me to give me eternal life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. And repeat this prayer if you haven't been following the Lord. Just say, Jesus, forgive me, Lord. I haven't been following you. I've been serving myself, Lord. I ask you to help me to return back to you that I can follow you wholeheartedly today and make a stand, Lord, the rest of the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can come back. It doesn't matter who you are. We are we're all sinners. You know, that's why I say quit judging your brother or sister. Let's look at ourselves. Let's look at what's wrong in our own hearts and ask God to change us. And that goes for me, too. I'm not just speaking to you, all right? When I give you words, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me as well. Now, I'm going to play a song, and I, I got this this morning, and then we're going to come back, and, and we're going to pray. Um, remember that one by, um, let me find it here, by Ray Bowles, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. Let's, let's pledge allegiance to Jesus the, this morning. Let's make a stand. The lamb with all my strength, with all I am, I will seek to honor his command. I pledge allegiance to the lamb. I have heard how Christians long ago were brought before a tyrant's throne. They were told that he would spare their lives if they would renounce the name. Ah! Uh -huh. 
pledge allegiance to the land. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the land. We pledge allegiance to the land. Make your stand. Are you going to follow Christ? There's no other way. I'm going to tell you, Jesus is the way, life, the truth. There is no other way. I mean, you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. There's only two choices. You don't get no in-between choices. So make your choice today. All right, I want to bring you that word. I really truly believe we're moving closer to something. Let's take a quick look at these earthquakes, and then I'm going to pray. Um, let's take a look at these earthquakes. Was there anything major here? We just had 2.8 Alaska 44 minutes ago, and then Papua New Guinea is still getting 4.5. Ecuador had a 4.5 110 minutes ago. Papua Guinea had a 5.0 and 5.5. New Guinea had another one two, two hours ago, 5.0, 5.3, and a 4.6. Then down here at 5.1 and 4.8 three hours ago in the Fiji Islands. Still small swarms going on in California here. 1.2 Mammoth Lakes four hours ago, California. Um, 1.8, I mean 1.9 Hawaii four hours ago. Geysers 1.8 four hours ago. 2.0 Geysers four hours ago. 4.9 Papua Guinea five hours ago. 4.9 again in Papua Guinea. Alaska 2.8, 2.6 and Yasmite Valley, California five hours ago. 5.4 and Serum C, that's somewhere in Australia, that was six hours ago. 4.7 Banna 2, eight hours ago. 5.2 and 5.4 in Papua Guinea, eight hours ago. Again, in Papua Guinea, New Guinea, 5.6, nine hours ago. 4.8 in Papua Guinea, ten hours ago. And 2.9 Puerto Rico, ten hours ago. 5.5 Banna 2, ten hours ago. 5.6 fan two islands again ten, 10 hours ago. That's somewhere in Australia. 2.3 in Lo Loyalton, California, 11 hours ago. 2.5 in Alaska. That was 11 hours ago. Montana had a point four, a small one, 11 hours ago. 3.2 in somewhere in Australia, 12 hours ago. 2.0 in Daly City, California, 12 hours ago. Small swarms going on in in California there. All right, I think that's it. Um, we're keeping an eye on the, the earthquake saints. All right, let's pray um, real quick. Father, I pray for all of us today as we get ready to leave. Lord, I ask for a hedge of protection over all of us. Keep us safe, Lord, wherever we're heading, to the right or to the left, Lord. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. Help us to um, <clears throat> excuse me. Keep our focus upon you, Lord. You are in control, Lord. We don't need to worry. We come against that spirit of worry, a spirit of fear, Lord. Our hope and our trust is in you, Lord. Thank you for meeting our needs according to your riches and glory, Lord. Thank you for the food that you provide, the shelter, our jobs, Lord. All the things that we neglect to thank you for, Lord. Lord, we lift up our nation, Lord. We lift up America. We lift up our president, Donald Trump. We ask for has your protection over him and keep him safe from the new world order. Lord, I pray that you would make decisions led by your spirit, Lord, in the Trump administration, Lord. I pray that we as a nation would turn our hearts back to you, Lord, and put you first in America, Lord, and that you would surround the president 
with godly leaders, Lord, spiritual leaders that you have put in office, Lord, not what man says, Father, but what you have said, Lord. We want your will to be established. Lord, in those letters that I've sent to the White House, Lord, I pray, Father, that they would receive those letters of warning, Lord, because it's about you, Lord. It's not about me, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. We want to give you the praise, the honor, and glory, Lord. We ask, Father, as we wait upon you, Lord, your will will be established, Lord. Father, I don't speak these words to speak negative or um, a gloom and doom, Lord. I speak these words to speak the truth and life, Lord, so that we can be awoke, awakened to what is happening in our nation and our world, Lord, and so that we can be prepared, Lord, for what is coming, Lord. Not to be sleeping, Lord. I pray for that right now for those churches that are sleeping, Lord, that you'd waken them, Lord. Awaken your people, Lord. The time is now, Lord. I pray for those that don't know you, that will give their hearts and lives to you, Lord. I pray for our families, our loved ones, Lord, that still need to come to Christ, that they'll be saved. Our friends, our neighbors, Lord, our co-workers, people that we come across that will witness to you, Lord. Lord, I ask that we would just speak salvation into their lives, Lord. Be witnesses for you in these last days, Lord. We thank you, Father, for greater miracles that are about to come forth, Lord. Miracles of healings. Lord, miracles, great miracles. I really, truly believe that we're about to see your power move like we've never seen before, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I ask you to meet the needs of your people, Lord, whatever the, those needs are, Lord. If they're out of work and they need a job, Father, favor with their boss, Lord, and increase. Lord, I pray for healing in their body right now. I stretch my hands. I pray for them, Lord. They're needing a healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I speak healing over them right now in Jesus' name, Father. You're the God that heals thee. Lord, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Father, whatever your need is, whatever their need is, Lord, maybe they're feeling discouraged, depressed, Lord, I ask you to encourage their hearts, Lord. Thank you, Father. As we patiently wait upon you, Lord, we know that the time is now, Lord, that you're getting ready to move, Lord. And we get our eyes on you, and we thank you, and we praise you, Father, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, saints, um, that's it. I I just felt like speaking another word. I told you I will keep speaking as the Holy Spirit leads me um, one day at a time. We don't know it. It can all change at any time. All right, so keep your eyes on Jesus. And until we meet again, this is Prophet Donna Wine, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner. God bless you. Have a safe and blessed Tuesday. Talk to you soon.